Uh, it's very difficult to play a character that's as sadistic as uh, uh, Tamaki, my character, in Dead Man Wonderland, as well as Kimberly, like we were talking about the first question that came up today. Um, it's weird. It's very, very weird. Because you have to figure out how you can make a horrific human being likable, you know? Because Tamaki, that character, who has seen Dead Man Wonderland? All right, I've got a fair amount of people. So what you know if you've watched Dead Man Wonderland, hopefully if I perform the character well, is that he's a horrifically sadistic, creepy dude, but you kind of like him, right? That's the best thing that you can do for a bad guy. Bad guys, as an audience member, you have to kind of like them. And you'll notice that the best shows, the best movies, all the best things that you've seen that have bad guys in them have bad guys that you kind of like. So that's the big challenge. That's the big challenge. And uh, it's hard because, you know, generally speaking, I'm not a very sadistic person. I don't pull the wings off of flies, <laughs> you know, or anything like that. I'm just I'm a regular guy, you know. So doing something that's so far outside of my wheelhouse requires research. <laughs> What's up? Um, hello, my name is Salvador. Salvador, how you doing? Um, I got. <laughs> okay, guys, Salvador wants to ask two questions. Yeah. I heard a no. Yeah. no. Yes, do it. yes, so do, do it. it, do it. Okay, you can. Okay. First of all, who is your favorite DBZ character besides Shrunk? Because, well. Uh, my favorite DBZ character besides Trunks is the tournament announcer. <laughs> because I also play him. <laughs> Alright, who else? Um, okay, again, big fan. Trunks is one of my favorite characters Thanks. ever. Thanks. And this isn't really a question, more like a statement, really. I'm surprised you didn't ask to fuse with Android 18. Oh. Me too. <laughs> That would be no, well, you know, that's the thing about anime, is anime is a pre-existing property. So, once it gets over to us, we have to kind of do what's on the screen. So, Trunks never cared much about Android 18, so... I guess he let Krillin have her. <laughs> I know, it's gross. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. No problem. Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Michaela. Michaela! Yes. What's up? <laughs> Um, out of all the characters, which one was most fun to voice act? She has a sword, guys. <laughs> oh. There's a bloody knife in her hand. Yeah. Uh -oh. Which character did you like playing the most? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't do any of that. Oh. Alright, so I probably like playing Desert Punk the best. Desert Punk is a disgusting, horrible human being with very low, questionable, or zero morals, and that's a blast. Because it's really close to my personality. <laughs> oh, she has a second question, guys. Um, should she ask a second question? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you got it. What do you not hate about Kimberly? What do I not hate about Kimberly? Uh, his uh, starched white outfit and hat <laughs> that matches. He always looked, he always reminded me, some, for some reason in Brotherhood, he always reminded me of Murder, She Wrote. Like he's like, I may be a genocidal maniac, but I'm trying to solve this mystery. <laughs> you got any more? No, that's it. All right, cool. Yeah! Hi, my name is... I'm lost in your pants. <laughs> Must be it sounded weird, right? <laughs> it's the universe. Her pants are the universe, guys. <laughs> Show everyone. Come here. Oh Get up God. here. Turn around. See? I know. She, oh, wow. Yeah, he's right. All right, here you go. I'll help you down. All right, so no, I'm not going to help you down. She's going to fly. She's going to kill you. All right, what's your name? Alicia. Alicia, what's up? Um, I have two questions. Okay. One, what inspired you to be an actor? Uh, okay, that's a good question. Uh, first, what inspired me to be an actor? What inspired me to be an actor is that I hate sports. <laughs> Don't we all? Also, Indiana Jones. Aww. That's pretty much the equation, guys. 
hates sports, plus Indiana Jones, equals professional actor. <laughs> Follow that formula, dude. All right. Um, so I grew up in Beaumont. All right? Yeah, I heard a ooh and a oh. <laughs> Me too, guys. So yeah, so I grew up in Beaumont, and uh, when I was there, uh, there was nothing to do but go to the movies. So I went to the movies constantly. My father played football for A&M, so he thought I would be a sports guy. Yeah, right? Woo! And uh, I'm not a sports guy. I can't play sports. I can't hold a ball without dropping it. Yeah, that's right. And um, I, uh, I, I guess I was a 10. And uh, I never wanted to play sports again. It was uh, the summer of 1984, and in the summer of 1984, the greatest thing happened. Uh, all of these movies were released. Real Genius, The Karate Kid, Footloose, Ghostbusters, Beverly Hills Cop, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and the list goes on. It's one of the greatest years for movies in history, right? So I saw Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom about eight times. Because in Beaumont, it's this hot outside all the time, and especially in the summer, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go to the movie theater to cool off, right? So I'll go to the movie theater to cool off, watch Indiana Jones, watch Ghostbusters, watch Karate Kid, Footloose, all of them multiple times. And I really kind of wanted to be Indiana Jones until I realized that his job is actually really boring and this is just a movie. And I thought, well, okay, so real archeology span is boring, but fake archeology span is fun. So I started looking into like that, and what does that take? Oh, these are actors, and they do plays, and they do movies, and they do TV shows, and that's all I was doing. And it just sort of clicked with me. So I set my dad down at the kitchen table, and I said, hey, Pop, um, I don't ever want to play sports again. I hate sports, please don't make me. And he was like, all right, what do you, what, well, okay, well, what do you want to do? I want to be an actor. <laughs> what does the guy from Texas at A&M say? Uh-huh. <laughs> that was about it, for about three years until he saw me in my first play, and then after that play, he came up to me and he was like, oh yeah, I get it, you should totally never play sports. <laughs> Acting is what you have to do. And uh, so, that's what I've been doing. <clears throat> What's the other question? Um, what is one, what is the, uh, what is the, <laughs> It's okay! It's all gonna be okay! Everyone, CPR! <laughs> I'm certified. Oh, she's certified. Okay, good. What is the one thing you hate about trunks? What is the one thing I hate about trunks? That I haven't recorded him in super yet. <laughs> one thing I hate about trunks that I have not recorded him in super yet because I and I, I'm not joking, this morning, at one point, every single person who came through the autograph line asked me that question about super. Are you doing super yet? Are you doing super yet? Are you doing super yet? And I have no problem answering the same question over and over again. That's fine, because I know that each individual who comes through doesn't have the answer. So, I just want to give you guys the good answer that you're looking for. I want to be able to say, yeah, I was in the studio yesterday and I did this great scene and you're going to love it. And I was like, oh, and he was like, yeah. <laughs> I can't do any of that yet. So that's the one thing I hate about him so far. You're welcome. All right, what you got? Okay, I have two questions as well. Everyone keeps having two questions. <laughs> okay, first, Fine. first question. Mm -hmm. um, between Trunks and America, who do you prefer acting as? Uh, between Trunks and America, who do I prefer acting? Who, the Probably performance? Prefer, yeah. Oh, America, easily. <laughs> America doesn't have to scream. America doesn't have to fight anybody. He just has to be awesome. <laughs> okay, um, second question. Are you really a hero? Yeah. She asked, am I really a hero? Yeah, I'm really a hero. Are you? To my children. <laughs> I can't believe I sold that to you guys. No, they hate me. Um, I'm going to get home tomorrow and they're going to be like, money, jerk! <laughs> Don't throw things at me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as a, a hero, no. I'm, I'm like in real life, I'm a regular guy, you know? I leave dishes in the sink a lot longer than I should. Uh, you know, I can't get all the laundry done, and sometimes it smells mildewy, and you gotta wash it again with vinegar. My dog craps all over the house constantly. She's got a nervous pooper. <laughs> Nobody in this room's a nervous pooper, I hope. Great. My dog is. So the other day we had a friend come over, 
this guy I work with in his studio, dude, it's a guy I work with, and uh, I do all the David Busters spots, right? And I recorded, he came by the house, and we were just gonna have a drink, try to grill out something, until I realized I also don't have a grill. And uh, so we're just hanging out, and my dog runs in, and she's like, bark, 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 bark. <laughs> And he's like, maybe I should go. <laughs> like, yeah, that would, that would be best, because this smell's gonna permeate the whole house in a second. You should train your dogs better. That's what is wrong. And she's getting actory with me. <laughs> should train my dog better? Yeah. I do you one better than that. What? I put her on medication. What? Huh? <laughs> yeah, she's taking tramadol every day. Tramadol is, a, is a, an opiate depressant kind of painkiller, right? It's like a, a codeine or hydrocodone, but much lighter, and uh, apparently you can give it to dogs. This was given to me by my vet, guys. I didn't just go, Tramadol! <laughs> my, uh, my vet, I, t I took the vet in, and uh, Izzy, my dog, did the nervous poop thing on the vet. And she's like, I think she needs some medication. I'm like, yeah, I know, I've been saying that for a year. <laughs> so I gave her too much on the first day. This is the funniest thing. So Izzy is this little mutt, and she's so stoned at this point where she's just. And, I'm, and my wife's like, maybe we should decrease the dosage. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow because this is hysterical. So. <laughs> She does that, she goes outside, she sits in the sun, and she's, there's a, there's a can, a, a, a little watering can for the plants that my daughter uses, it's sitting right here, and Izzy's sitting up kind of on her side like this, and this happens. <laughs> and her head, her head smacks on the ground, and the bucket flies away, and she jumps up, and the sound of the bucket rolling scares her, and she's, <gasps> We gave her less medication the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Now she's on a quarter tablet of Tramadol daily, and she's fine. It's like all that horrible, horrible stuff, and horrible crap that she was pulling on us. Vanish. All right, get out. You get out of here, Germany. Oh, Germany. Oh, well, I'm not I'm, the only one I'm sorry. Genocide. I'm sorry, go on, France. Go on. <laughs> Finland? <laughs> Belarus? I don't know. Okay. Hi! Hi. What's your name? Didi. Didi, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Great. My question is, well since Trunks is my favorite character of Dragon Ball, uh, Thank you. I was asking, uh, do you think that since he's a half Saiyan, half Saiyans do have a higher chance of defeating any battle whatsoever, do you think that Trunks will ever get that spotlight? Uh, so the question is, since Trunks is a half Saiyan and they have a better chance of beating everybody in fighting, is Trunks ever going to get the spotlight to do that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Is that the question? Mm -hmm. Wow, I retained it. Um, no. Oh. <laughs> he won't. And I'm sorry. Now, of course, I'm speculating because I don't know. But uh, I would say probably not because Goku. You know, it, it, that'd be like saying um, in, uh, in Superman, what's the name of the guy who runs the newspaper? Who? White, right? So the guy who runs the newspaper, like, is he going to get his moment in the sun? Hell no, that's Superman. <laughs> Superman fights. Goku fights. Goku wins. It's Goku's show. You know? We're just lucky to be a part of it. Thank you. Not Sean Schimmel's show, that guy sucks. <laughs> Goku's show, very different. Thanks. Thank you. All right, dude, what up? Bring it on. What's your name? Bernie. Bernie? Bernie. 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 Okay, what up? Bernie. Why didn't you do more work with uh, Yu Yu Hakusho? Why didn't I do more yeah. work? Like, why did you just do random? Why didn't, why didn't you proceed it? I don't understand the question. Why didn't you do more work with Yu Yu Hakusho? Why did he's asking why I didn't do more work with Yu Yu Hakusho? I played did it three... offer you, or you just weren't like. Well, I played three characters on the show. I thought you just ran 
I played Shorin, Rando, and Sake. And I also wrote some of the episodes and directed them. So, please don't ask me to do more. I'm really tired. You're gonna make him nervous. I didn't know you did. Right? What? I didn't know you did all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did that. I was an ADR director at Funimation for a while. I was a head writer for them for a while. I uh, retired those positions to focus on acting, and man, that's uh, it's been a lot better life for me personally since then. Um, just because I can focus on one aspect of my career instead of three. You know, I don't have to divide my focus. But as far as that goes, and here's another, just to answer a question that you didn't ask, but I think you were kind of leading to, is almost like, why didn't I play more or bigger roles on that show? Yeah. That is not up to the actor. Never is. It's not the actor's choice. And this is a big mistake that a lot of people make. So think of it like this. You, you're like, you know, hey, I go, s okay, Jurassic World. Who saw Jurassic World? All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, hands down. Who liked Jurassic World? Okay, hands down. Who did not? Okay. So it's like 25% to 75%, right? I'm pretty sure Jurassic World is still the highest grossing movie of all time. Um, but a lot of people who didn't like it, their whole uh, response to why they didn't like Jurassic World was, why didn't Chris Pratt do this? Or why didn't Chris Pratt say this? And the reason is, is because somebody said to Chris Pratt, here's $20 million, show up. What would you say? Because I would say yes. <laughs> and if I'm on set and somebody gives me a stupid line to say, I'm gonna say, how exactly would you like this stupid line read? <laughs> I can read it only one way, because it's stupid, but you read it. You do it, because it's your job as an actor. You listen to the director, and you play your role. It's not Chris Pratt's job, unless he's a producer, and on that film he was not, to uh, affect the production, or change the script, or move the structure of the story. Actors, <coughs> contrary to public opinion, have virtually no power whatsoever. We just perform. Now, that can change, of course. An actor who produces can produce his or her own project, or they can uh, produce somebody else's project. But actors just don't have a lot of uh, weight. And our job is to audition and audition and audition, and when we get a role, we perform it, and then we go on to the next role. So uh, I think a lot of people add a lot of weight to actors just because they are at the forefront. You know what I'm saying? But we don't have any power, so I couldn't, I couldn't go to someone when we were working on Yu Yu Hakusho and say, listen, I really think I should have a bigger role. <laughs> I can do that, and I know actors who do that, but generally, that doesn't work for them. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. You got a vote. What's up? The sky. The sky. You yeah. sit down. <laughs> no, What's your name? I'm Obed. All right, how you doing? Good. What's up? What's the question? Who, 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 would, who, who would win in a fight? Trunks or One Punch Man? Uh, who would win in a fight? Trunks or One Punch Man? Um, I, I would assume One Punch Man because he kills with one punch. <laughs> Obviously. Am I right? Yeah. All right. I've never watched that show, so. Uh, also, uh, another question. Yes. Are you related to Chuck Norris? <laughs> <laughs> Am I related to Chuck Norris? You got the beard, so. You'd be surprised, actually, how many times I've been asked that question. But no, Chuck Norris, man, I love Chuck Norris, but that guy would have to work really hard to have a doughy body like this. <laughs> this is years of pizza and cereal at three in the morning, guys. Do you know how long I had to sit and stare at television for this to happen? That's right. The best part of it is like when you sit sideways and everything spills over and you're like, oh man, that's good. That's at least 10 more pounds that I put on. That's great. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have waffles for dinner and then waffles for breakfast. And then just lay out on the couch all day. Nope, not related to Chuck Norris. Thanks, buddy. Hi. Hi! What's up? Alright, 
So America and Bianca. America wakes up one day and he's saying, what would he do? Okay. So the question is, if America woke up one morning and became a Saiyan, <laughs> what would he do? Yeah. Well, first off, Germany. <laughs> we take Germany off the map, <laughs> all right? Because we know what they do, historically speaking. They're fine. Um, and then probably just eat. <laughs> Because Saiyans eat real good, and so now he's a Saiyan, he can even eat more? <laughs> Probably a cheeseburger eating competition. That's what I'm going to say. Cheeseburger eating competition? Survey says, <laughs> I'm right. Uh, take, over, take over the nearest McDonald's. Uh, she said he would take over the nearest McDonald's. No. No. Because it's McDonald's. <laughs> I got a couple of burger joints up near my neck of the woods, and those are the best burgers I've ever had. That's where I'd take over. Waterburger? Oh, Waterburger. Nice. Oh, so good. Always the best burger. Man. Okay, yeah, Waterburger's pretty sweet. We got a place up next to us uh, called Haystack, and uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. I might want to check it out if I find myself there. Go to Haystack in Dallas. You won't be disappointed. Yes! Who would I want to fight? Oh, who would win? Who would win? Okay, Evan asks, who would win in the fight between grown-up Trunks? No, grown-up Gohan and future Trunks. Uh, future Trunks. Because... <laughs> Gohan. <laughs> I mean, really. Hello, my dear. How are you? My name is Olivia and... Olivia! Yes. Yes, I do. You want me to do it now? Yeah. Oh, okay. She wants me to do the voice of Sh uh, Shigaraki in uh, uh, the show. Y'all know who I'm talking about? Uh, the guy with the hands all over him? From My Hero Academia? Oh, there we go. I, gotta I play him too. I gotta get started on that one. What do you want me to say? Um, any line. Okay, she wants me to say any line. I don't remember any line. <laughs> So what I'll do... What's your name again? Olivia. Olivia. Okay, Olivia. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go sit at the back of the room. <laughs> and wait for me. That's <laughs> Shigaraki, guys, not me. I'm gonna go to the green room in a minute. Drink it Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Dr. Pepper's always best. Dr. Pepper is the greatest thing on earth. It's really where mankind peaked. Okay, can I help you? <laughs> yes? In Italia, whatever happened to Tony? Uh, the question of whatever happened to Tony and Italia, I have no answer for that. Okay. I don't, I mean, I truly, I just don't know. You know, one day he just vanished like aliens do. We'll just say that he's an alien, that's what happened. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, wait. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yes, she's asking is the Shigaraki role that I just voiced, uh, did I have fun doing that? Yeah, it's always fun playing a bad guy. Like I said before, it's fun playing a bad guy who um, you have to somehow figure out a way to get the audience to like, you know? And he was fun. He was a blast. I love playing bad guys. I also like playing bad guys because you don't have a stake in them as an actor. Why? You ask why? Who asked why? Nobody did. I'll tell you. <laughs> the reason you don't have a stake in a bad guy as an actor and you can just cut loose and do anything is because you know they're dying. <laughs> they're the bad guy. They're gonna die. It's so rare, so rare that the good guy doesn't win. Because as human beings, we want the good guy to win. In our books, in our movies, in our TV, that's what we want. So, when you get a bad guy, you can go nuts, because there's no stakes. I don't, I, it doesn't matter how I play him, uh, I just have to play him appropriately, you know? So I just cut loose, I like it. You're welcome.
Hey. What's your name? Uh, Dominic. Dominic, what's up? Uh, yeah, hello. Hi. <laughs> Can I ask you how it was voicing Sanji? Sure. How was it voicing Sanji? There you go. <laughs> he asked, how was it voicing Sanji? Fun, I love, I love Sanji. Sanji's a great character. He's got a weird dichotomy in so far as he's a really, uh, you know, smooth, fighting, badass kind of guy, and then over here he's this dorky ladies man, right? So I identify, <laughs> you know? I'm super cool, right? I'm hip, I can drop that voice down. I wear all black like Sanji does. <laughs> but girls, that's my whole life. Well, girl now, I'm married, so it's just one, you know? But yeah, yeah, it's... It's a blast. I love being able to s switch between those two sides. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Awesome. <laughs> yes? Have you ever been to a Trunks fan site? Have I ever been to a Trunks fan site? About, yeah. But I mean, we're talking like in the early days of the internet, like 15 <laughs> plus years ago. There was a girl who ran a website called Temple of Trunks. <laughs> and I was early enough on that I didn't understand uh, how to market myself as an actor and all this kind of stuff. So I went there and talked to her and she helped and she was really kind. But since then, it's been a long time since we kept in touch. That's good. But yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes? How did uh, Funimation like, contact you? And uh, just can you describe your overall experience working with them? How did they contact me to first work for them? Yeah. Uh, they didn't, I did. Uh, Funimation, I, I acquired a phone number, I called the phone <laughs> number, and I auditioned. And then, about a month later, I got suspended from college. <laughs> and uh, I, it was stupid, I, it's gonna, piss everyone in this room off, but I failed Spanish twice. Because <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, and I'm really an idiot. I, like, I, there, are, there are these things that I know really, really well, and then there's these things I don't understand. And this includes math, and foreign language, interpersonal relationships, parenting, <laughs> being married, and being a regular human being. So, over here is acting. That's it. Um, so, anyway, uh, where was I? You are, it's your job to pay attention to me. I'm not asking, I'm asking you, where was I? I forget. See, everyone loses their place. Probably because I don't have a college degree. Uh, so, what happened was they, uh, Funimation, I went there, I auditioned, I got suspended from school, and then like the next day, was called in to audition for Trunks, which they were casting for. So I went in, I was just on their audition list, right? Sort of. And then I went in and I auditioned for Trunks. Then they gave me what's called a callback, where they give you a longer audition for this character because they're really trying to set it. And after the callback, I got home. This is how long ago it was. I got home and there was a message on my cassette tape answering machine on my house phone, telling me that I booked the role of Trunks and they needed me in the next day. So I went in and I voiced. And I was, first few sessions were Chris Sabat teaching me how to do this particular kind of acting, which as somebody who has done every kind of performance that I can think of off the top of my head, uh, anime voiceover is by far the hardest. It's really challenging. Uh, it requires timing, it requires uh, an ability to sort of flash, memorize bits of dialogue, which is also a really difficult thing to do, uh, especially for a stupid person. Um, so, anyway, yeah, that's that's how I got started. All right, thank you. You got it. Hi. Hi. What's up? I'm Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Nice to meet you. Again. Um, you voiced the um, the announcer on Dragon Ball Z. Yes, I played the tournament announcer on Dragon Ball Z. Okay, I was wondering if you could uh, use his voice, but uh, okay. probably like an example, like probably promoting like the con. 
Okay. So she wants to hear the tournament announcer from Dragon Ball Z. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the World Martial Arts Tournament. No, we're not there. Oh, oh. Where are we? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to McAllen, Texas at some convention center that I forgot the name of. <laughs> We are going to have a great time this weekend because, as you know, the voice actors for Dragon Ball Z are here, and you don't care! <laughs> Thanks. What's up, buddy? Uh, my name's Kyle. Kyle, what's up? Uh, what's your favorite thing about Trunks? And also, in your opinion, who would win uh, a fusion between... Vegeta and Trunks, or a fusion between Gohan and Goku. Okay, let's go with the first. Okay, let's go with the second question first. Who would win in a fusion fight between Goku, Goku and, and Gohan, Gohan against Trunks and Vegeta? Against Trunks and Vegeta. Well, Trunks and Vegeta will win because Gohan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what was your first question? Uh, what's your favorite thing about Trunks? Uh, what's my favorite thing about Trunks? It's got to be the sword. It's a sword. I know I made fun of the sword earlier, but yeah, the sword's pretty cool. I mean, come on, if I was standing up here with a sword, you'd all be a little scared, but also a little attractive. All right. Thanks, buddy. Good. All right, you, sir, and the red hat are the last question. No, 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 you oh, come oh. up here. Okay, I'm skipping you, you loser. It's his turn. No, come on, what's up? Let's give it. Uh, just asking a question, if you could do me a favor. What's if up? If you could do it in the announcer voice, say, uh, as I'm walking away, say, Adrian is walking away and he's not coming back. Okay, go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Adrian the loser is walking away. <laughs> And he's not coming back! Oh. And by not coming back, I mean sitting down in that chair and staying in this room with you! Yeah. <laughs> so if you've got anything else to say to him, he's right there! <laughs> Alright, last question. Don't suck. <laughs> and then he looks at me and he's like, It was gonna suck. <laughs> It's going to suck. Okay, what, what is it? What's your name? Ramiro. Uh, Ramiro, okay. What's your question? Do you know... Do you know the Muffin Man? <laughs> do I know the Muffin Man? Yes, do you know the Muffin Man? Hell yes, I know the Muffin Man. Damn. The Colorado Muffin Man. Oh, <laughs> Like, 30% of the audience got that. That's about the perfect ratio for jokes. 